Folks, welcome back. Hope you had a nice little break. Um, we're going to hear from Jerome Toole now. Jerome is a climate-concerned web developer. In 2013, he co-founded Cause Hub, a social enterprise focused on finding out how to drive effective activism online. He's also a co-founder of the Brainchild Festival, held annually in the UK, celebrating DIY spirit, art, music, and ideas of people around us. He now works at Whole Green Digital, exploring ways to make the web more sustainable and also more delightful. And he's going to talk us, to us a little bit about what, why it's important to measure and how you can actually do so using some of the tools out there that, um, that he has helped create. So uh, I will pass it over to you, and you can take it away, Jerome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a first for me. I, I, I'm not used to presenting, but certainly not used to presenting in my bedroom. Um, but I'm very comfortable here, and I hope you're all comfortable at home. Um, Okay, so uh, this presentation is about a website carbon calculator that Whole Grain built last year. Um, and I'm just going to talk about why we felt the need to build this and also uh, some of our findings having now been running it for a while. So um, carbon emissions on the web was uh, a big blind spot for me. I, I was I joined Whole Grain last April or something like that, and I'd been building websites for six years, or at least been involved in building building websites for six years, um, and I'd been involved in climate activism and stuff, and just kind of really been you know I, I've cared about the climate for a long time and made lifestyle changes and everything, but I didn't realise until joining Whole Grain that there was a relationship between the way we built websites. Um, and carbon emissions, and that there was, you know, any any real energy usage by the internet uh, that, that was caused by the internet worth talking about. So when uh, I was introduced to that idea, it was kind of a bit of a shock, um, and I initially thought, if if this is the case, that the way that we build websites has an impact on on carbon emissions, and if I'm a, a sort of typical developer. Um, then how is there going to be any change because people just simply simply don't understand that there is a relationship. So, um, and I think this kind of comes back to a problem that we're facing, which is that the web inherently is kind of, um, it's, its energy usage is kind of invisible. It feels really light to use. Most users experience the web as a uh, stream of images or like content that they read. Um, and they know that their their device uses energy, but the servers that are whirring away um, and the huge server farms that um, sit somewhere out in the in the in the countryside somewhere are just like not even in their in their mind. And I think that's actually the case for developers to some extent as well. As web makers and managers, we're a little bit more aware of the fact that there are servers, but at the end of the day, we pay a hosting company a service for a service and we, we don't get the energy bill at the end of the day um, so there is the problem that you can't manage what you can't measure uh, and you certainly can't manage um, what you're not aware of or what you don't see so uh, energy use on the internet is split up between these three things you've got the data centers transmission networks and devices end user devices um, and the split looks like this. There's like 48% data centers. So it's pretty much most of the data centers, 14% transmission networks, and 38% devices, which is really quite high. But the, the majority is not end user, end user devices. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with my speaker notes. Um, so this big number, which I don't really understand, is uh, the total energy consumed by data centers in 2016, 416 terawatt hours. Uh, and for, for anyone who doesn't know these stats, the internet, if the internet was a country, it would be something like the sixth largest polluter um, on a similar scale to Germany. And those figures change depending on the study, but it's something in that sort of area. The scary thing is that this isn't set to slow down. Um, and analysts forecast that data centers will consume triple the amount of energy in the next decade. 
and actually when you think about this initially I, I was kind of like really and then I started to realize yeah I mean page web page sizes to take one example have just increased um, and uh, in 2010 uh, the the median web page was uh, 0.47 megabytes and now in 2019 it's 1.8 megabytes and there's very little stopping us as developers and sort of website managers from just expanding and expanding with increasing page speeds um, so do we look at a, are we looking at a future where um, we, we shop in immersive virtual reality I think it's entirely possible um, and the question is how can we sort of limit ourselves and how can we put checks and balances in place so that we are actually retaining some awareness of the impact that uh, that the way that we implement sites um, impacts uh, carbon emissions um, so the task was to measure website carbon of a, of a given website and this was especially important for whole grain because whole grain tracks its carbon footprint across most of its kind of operations um, and so once there was a realization that uh, the websites were also uh, responsible for carbon emissions we had to find a way to measure um, the problem with the internet being distributed is that you it's very difficult for uh, people to analyze exactly how much energy is used from data center to end user device. Um, but luckily there are a few uh, studies that get us some way towards that. And what we've uh, found is that there is enough evidence to uh, show us a relationship between gigabytes and kilowatt hours. And once you have that relationship, then it becomes relatively easy to measure some some kind of estimation of a relationship between um, website page size which is easy to measure and the carbon emissions that come out of that so that was the key that enabled us to start this um, attempting to create this calculator it's actually an estimator because every step along the line is a is a real kind of is a number of averages and and sort of guesstimates but the important thing is that it's relative to um, between websites. So you can at least start to benchmark which websites do well and which do badly. So the calculation is we take the bytes transferred and we then times that by the ratio between the kilowatt hours and bytes. And that's your energy usage per page. Then uh, for, uh, and I should mention that uh, the transfer size is based on the home page at the moment that's how we sort of you just put in the, the url and we just look at the home page to start with um, and it's also adjusted for return visits which are obviously cached um, and then the traffic here so we get then energy uses per page times the annual traffic and uh, times electricity carbon intensity is your annual carbon impact of a, of a given website as I said, it's an estimator, but it gets us some way to seeing and visualizing the impact. Um, the annual traffic here that we use is an average, unless the user puts it in to the calculator. And the electricity carbon intensity we currently use is the UK like grid standard, um, which is not, uh, not the worst, but not the best. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah, so this is what the calculator looks like at the moment. Um, it's up, it's online, and we've had, uh, I think, 5,000 um, sites have gone through it. So we've got some interesting findings from that. The average website that's been tested uh, was measured at 2.25 grams of CO2 per page view, which is apparently the same as a uh, as boiling a kettle for a cup of tea um, and 2.25 grams is about a sugar cube if you can imagine that and we also got a sense of what the extremes look like so this is the greenest website we tested um, I think we've cancelled out some websites that just were like a single word or something but this website has multiple pages it's got uh, navigation 
um, and this beautiful interface. Uh, and that was 0 0.004 grams CO2 per page view. At the other end of the scale, I also should mention that that is hosted on a Raspberry Pi at the back of the cupboard, um, which I think demonstrates just how efficient the web can be. And that really should be sort of remembered by uh, the web building community is that it's an inherently really an efficient medium. On the other end of the scale, this website um, comes in at 57 grams of CO2 per page view. Um, this is a classic example where it loads every, it loads a lot of images in and it loads every image as if it had just been taken by a camera. So nothing's resized or compressed at all. So this gives us some perspective. Um, 14,000 visitors to David and Kay site, which is the smallest, is equal to one visitor to the family.co in terms of CO2 emissions. Changes, what do, we, what do we learn from this? How do we at Whole Grain kind of change in, in response? And also how would we hope the, the industry might change in response? Um, at Whole Grain, we were working with Network Rail and we were able to switch their hosting over to a renewable hosting company. Um, and the impact is large. Um, so clearly that's a really, it's a, it's a really easy thing to do. It's, it, it doesn't take much thought. Um, and so that, that's, a, that's a good thing, it's a good start. Unfortunately, th that only makes a change for the data center. It doesn't affect the uh, end user device. It doesn't affect the transmission networks. So it's really important that we do still focus on um, changing the uh, page weight. Obviously, the whole user experience camp as a, as a whole, without the concerns about climate change, are focusing on performance. But the two are not quite the same. You could easily have a, uh, a website that loaded everything really quickly on initial page load and then continued to load uh, really heavy video or images at a rate that was unnoticeable to the user. That would be great for user experience, but it really wouldn't be good for climate change. So what we did on our own website, um, we got together and we started the, we started a redesign and we started from at the design phase. Um, so that was really important because you got everyone on board and um, we cut out full width images, cut out video as much as possible. We used SVG for decorative aspects um, and we reduced font weight hugely by using system fonts and subsetting fonts. Um, the old website was 880 kilobytes and the new is 187 kilobytes um, with 0.24 grams of CO2 per page view. And that's with images um, and I think a very attractive site of it, and it's kind of doesn't look bare bones. So what next? Um, we are working on sustainable web manifesto with a few other people in the sustainable UX community. Um, and that will hopefully be released, um, launched publicly sometime in the next couple of months. Um, and basically it's just a call to everyone in the space to sign up and uh, uh, express their their commitment to um, building a web that is clean, efficient, open, honest, and regenerative. Um, so please keep your eyes open for that. And when it comes around, it'd be amazing if uh, you'd sign it and, and share it wider. Um, I think that's all from me. Um, but we'd love if you would try the calculator and share it. Um, it will be getting updates um, in the coming months. Um, and yeah, send, send me your thoughts. That's my email. And then the whole grain Twitter account, which is, is always keen to hear your thoughts. That's it for me. Thanks very much.